Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, place your cross on. You know, it helps you. Helps give you strength. Helps you when you're weak. When you can't, you don't have any strength. He'll be your strength. God does whatever is best for your situation. Just remember that. He does whatever best for your situation. That's why he don't want us to try to take all take matters in our own hands because he does what's best for your situation. So put your cross on. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from John chapter 5. Starting with verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So first thing you can understand is Jesus does exactly what his Father wants him to do. Do you understand? For the Father loved the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the Son. Hmm. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. You got to have both. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, have everlasting life, and shall not come into damnation. But it is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Hmm. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, and that which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Now watch what he says now. And shall come forth, they that have done good unto resurrection of life. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So one thing you're going to realize, everybody's going to rise at the sound of what? Hmm. At the sound of what? His voice. When will they rise? If you know the full story, when he come back, his voice is going to raise the dead. All dead. Those that have done evil to damnation. Those that have done good, life. So has anybody went to heaven yet? Okay, all right. I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge and my judgment is true, just. But I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which have sent me. Hmm. So Jesus does the work of the Father. So his intentions and his plans are the same. Whether it be New Testament or Old Testament, it's the same intention because he does the work of the Father, right? So for all you people who don't want to read the Old Testament or the New, I mean the Old Testament, Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was God, right? That's the first chapter of John, I think, if I'm correct. Let's see what the first chapter of John says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing, not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Mm. Jesus is the word. Jesus was there from the beginning. For all you who only want to focus on the New Testament, well, God has changed. God does not change. He's still the same. There's another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he seeth witnesses of me is true. You sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that you might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that for John. For the works which the Father have given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father have sent me. And the Father himself which have sent me have borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And you have not heard his, 
his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him you believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of who? Me. And you would not come to me, that you may have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of God in you. I come into my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor of another, and seek not the honor that come from God only? Do you think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Wow. I told you the Bible tells you everything you need to know. So first thing you're going to realize is Jesus was sent by the Father. They are one. He does the perfect will of God. If you believe if you believe in the Father, you believe what Moses said. You believe the Old Testament. You believe all of this. He said, they write of me in there. Wow. Jesus is telling you, I'm all through the Bible. I'm not just in the New Testament. I'm everywhere. That's what the Lord said. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's not just in the New Testament, people. When will people get this through their heads? You understand? You got to believe both. You can't say, I just believe in Jesus, but not the God of the Old Testament. You can't. You can't do one without the other. You can't have one without the other. You understand? You know. You know when kids, a lot of kids eat milk. I mean cereal without milk. I'm not saying it's good, but together it's perfect. <laughs> you understand? It's a full meal then. You just eat cereal without milk, you're still going to be hungry. I'm just being real. Kids do it because it's sweet. It's like a snack. You know, but you put it together. It's a full meal. Just like the word of God. You put the father and the son together. It's a full meal. If you just focus on the son, you're only getting half of the story. You understand? The whole Bible is about the coming of Christ. Even from the coming and creation of David. All of it is linked to who? Christ. So people, remember that. Remember that. Keep that in your heart. And everything will work out fine for you. Believe what Moses said. Everything will work out fine for you. Jesus tells us everything we need to know. So you can't be tricked by no one. Don't you understand that? That's why he tells you certain things. So you can't be tricked. That's why you read your Bible so you can't be tricked. He just talked about the resurrection. The Bible just said, none has ascended, but him that descended. You know, now think about this now. There is a resting place for people. Me and a brother of Christ of mine, we were talking about the resurrection. That there's a waiting place. I don't know what it is. Some want to call it purgatory or whatever. But there's a resting place. Because you know, when uh, people die, they rest. But they don't go to heaven. They might go to another place. But we know, at the same time, there might be a spiritual rest. Because he just said... You know, we were just talking about this. He just said, right? The people that are in the grave are going to wake up. Right? So the resting place must be in the grave. So it might not be a purgatory. It might just be resting. Now, let me go to the Bible. I'm going to tell I'm going to prove you in regards to a resting place. You know, Samuel was mad at Saul when he used a necromancer to raise him from sleeping. He was upset with him. Like, what are you doing? Basically, even in death, he knew the truth. So when he rose, he was like, what are you doing? Why have you done this? You see, Saul was seeking familiar spirits and seeking a woman that can do things that's not pleasing to the Lord. So he woke him. He woke him out of his sleep. With something that you don't supposed to do. You know, the world is running rampant with people that do such things. Do I believe in ghosts? Yes. Why? Because it is written. They might not call them ghosts. But we know for a fact that people can raise 
the spirit of others. We know they can. It's right there in the Bible in fine print. He can. Do you understand? It's right there. Why is it right there? To let you know some things. And it's possible. You know, these people who practice these dark arts, they know. They know it. You remember the the Ouija board? It's like every movie that involves some kind of spiritual awakening involves some kind of summoning. So there is a spell to be done. I'm sure the woman did something. I don't know if she was with the Ouija boy, but uh, she did something to raise Samuel from the grave. That's not right. Only God has supposed to have that power. But there's powers out there that people do that God does not appreciate because there's people trying to play God. If it was normal, he wouldn't have been upset. It's like you sleep in the best sleep of your life. Now think about this, these evil spirits. Now I'm going on, on spiritual growth in regards to a lot of things right now. A lot of things ain't written. But a lot of things are revealed in the spirit. Let's say people raise people up who are evil. Think about it. People who didn't live right for God. They probably don't want to go back to sleep. Because they know. And they got a feeling. Something ain't right. Or they got unfinished business to do. You know why they got unfinished business? Because <laughs> they didn't get right with their father's business. They can't get right with God. They can't get right with Jesus. So they're probably evil and unruly. If they were evil when they was alive, what you think gonna happen when they rise? They're gonna be evil still. <laughs> evil spirits. So guess what? You got evil ghosts and you got good ghosts. Why? Because the world is filled with what? Evil people. And good people. You can't have one without the other. So don't mess with things that you don't know nothing about. You know, people thinking they can just channel certain people. You don't know what's going on in this world. You know how many people have died in this world? Millions. Billions probably. Now people have died in this world since it began. You don't know what you messing with when you go into those dark arts. Who you awoke. You understand? Right? It's not good. It's the reason why God got something in the, in the Bible. I just got, it's one more question. I had to ask my loved one. I remember one time I used to go to this lady called Sylvia. Now, this is the thing. At one point, I was like, man, that's, that's bull junk, what she doing. There's no way she can do that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's bull. How can she talk to the spirits? Well, we already know in the Bible, some people can talk to spiritual energy. How you know that? Saul talked to Samuel. It is written. A lot of people believe don't believe the Bible. They believe some parts of it, but some parts they're like, nah, that can't be. There's no way. Way, yes, way, like Bill and Ted, yes, way. Do you understand? It is what it is. Believe it all. Do I think there's things that go bumping at night? Yes. Do I believe something can be hiding under your bed? Yes. Do I believe something that can be in that dark corner of your child's bedroom when they be like, "Mama, something here with me"? Yes. Cause no telling what people have done in houses. It's a lot of people that do good things in this world. And it's a lot of people that do dark things. And don't tell them what gateways and doors they open. You see, that's why I'm messing with stuff like that. You shouldn't do. You know? I learned a lot of stuff from, from movies. You know, a lot of people, it's fiction. Yeah, it's maybe fiction. But it's truth in them. It's truth in a lot of things that you see on TV. Right? It is. These people know what they be writing about sometimes. Sometimes they put it in their soul. You can get interest, interested. They can draw you to the dark side. You know Ouija boys are back on the rise. You see them in almost all movies now. You know, it used to be a child's toy, Ouija boys. But in reality, people used to sit around tables and talk to this woman and she'll summon up the dead. 
It is written. <laughs> it's true. Why am I talking about this today? Be careful. You know, it's not our authority to do any of those things. Whose authority is it given to? Jesus. Those people are trying to play God. It's Jesus, y'all. When, when, when Christ come back, who sent him back? The Father. And when he come back, what are you going to do? Open his mouth. Let the rest, let the dead sleep. Let the dead sleep. Stop messing with them. It's like you be watching these paranormal activity shows. Is somebody here? Don't tell them what else they did, but behind off, off scenes. Is somebody here? Tell, talk to me. <laughs> and there are manipulations, manipulative things out there. You know. You don't want to see half of this stuff, man. I'm, I'm going to tell you, me, personally. I done took pictures with stuff in the background that wasn't there. One of them was demonic. I done been snatched out the bed by something. And I saw it. You know, there's stuff out there. You know, I've gave the testimony in regards to a lot of things that were going on in my house at that time. You understand? I'm not afraid of it no more. I'm not scared. I know there's things out there, but I'm not afraid anymore. Right back then, I was scared. You know, it still gives me a chills. Like, you know, the, the Holy Spirit's feeling, it feels like, like this. I'm going to explain it to you. To anybody who don't know how the Holy Spirit feels. But I'm going to tell you also, that evil spiritual energy feels almost the same. Feels almost the same. How do you know that? The Bible says, test the spirits to see if they are of God or not. Right? So there is spiritual energy out there that is evil and there's spiritual energy out there that is what? Good. You understand? But the feeling is like this. You know when you get those chills on your body? Or like you feel it in the room and you like feel a little tingle? Ask anybody who ever had the Holy Ghost or felt the presence of God. It's so, they feel so similar. Like you ever be sitting in a room, you like, you feel a little chill, like something's in here. The Holy Spirit is similar. You understand? So why do you think you need the Holy Spirit? Because there's evil spirits out there that latch on to people too. Latch on to people and cause people to do all types of things, evil things. And some of this spiritual energy give people power. How do you know that? There was a man that bewitched people who was walking through when uh, Stephen, I mean, when one of the disciples were walking through baptizing folks. And he had bewitched the people through sorceries. Right? He did. That's why Peter told him, hey, you ain't made right with God. I can't give you the Holy Spirit. He tried to buy it. So he had a spiritual energy in him, but it wasn't the Holy Spirit. He couldn't receive the Holy Spirit. He couldn't. Why? Because he wasn't right with God. He was baptized, but he received the Holy Spirit. Hmm. True. I told you. People think when you get baptized, you automatically receive the Holy Spirit. That's not true. It may be working for some cases, but not all cases. You don't instantly receive the Holy Spirit when you're baptized. It's in the Bible. Read it. You understand? There are things in the Bible that people don't want to, some people don't believe in heaven or hell. They believe this is it. This is, you can make your heaven here on earth. Some people believe that your loved ones are in that heaven and in the sky. There is a heaven in the sky. I ain't gonna lie to you, but none of us tell you. None of us there. If you read Revelations, you know for a fact that heaven is going to be recreated on earth. A heaven is like God creates the garden better. <laughs> and all the people that gave their life to him received the Holy Spirit, received the gift of the Holy Ghost, accepted Jesus Christ, accepted God in their life, lived right according to him, going to be there. And outside of it, it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It is written.
You don't believe me? It is written. That's all I'm going to say to you. It's right there for the world to see. But you know, most people don't read Revelations. You know, like you are, uh, if you watch cartoons, let me pause for a second. 